Postmaster General Louis DeJoy testified before the Senate Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee. And there were several moments worth highlighting, including how he tried to play dumb when it came to the post office, changing its operations by picking up mail drop boxes and also taking mail sorting machines out of service. So here's DeJoy pretending like he had no idea what was going on. Since my arrival, we removed 700, uh, uh, 700 post uh, po collection boxes, of which I had no idea uh, or that that was a process, or I've been uh, that that was a process. When we found out, when I found out about it, we we socialized it here amongst the leadership team and looked at what the what you know what the um, um, what the excitement was it was creating. So I decided uh, to uh, to stop it. Um, and we'll pick it up after the election. On the machines, the machines we are speaking about, again, mail volume is, is dropping. This is a process that uh, I, I was unaware about. It's been around for a couple of years now. And I repeat, both the collection boxes and this machine uh, uh, the close down, I, had, I, was, I was made aware when everybody else was made aware. Okay, so he's lying. Um, one way, one good factor to consider uh, in whether you want to determine whether he's lying or not is that he has investments in companies that the post office serves as a competitor to. Um, so already uh, there's a huge conflict of interest there. But let me also note that he just mentioned that, oh, I didn't I didn't know that this was going on. I didn't know that they were picking up these drop boxes. I didn't know that they were uh, you know, taking these mail sorting machines out of service. That's why once I found out, I decided to stop it. He decided to stop it when it was already too late, when literally hundreds of mail sorting machines had already been taken out of service. And after there was backlash, when it made national headlines and everyone was outraged, he finally decided to respond to that backlash by agreeing that he would halt these changes to the post office. But keep in mind that much of the damage had already been done and I'm not buying for a second that he didn't know what was going on. So let me give you some of the actual numbers and evidence and you can judge for yourselves whether you believe me or you believe um, this crook. Uh, so <laughs> as Ari Berman tweeted out, um, the United States Postal Service ordered to remove 671 mail sorting machines under DeJoy. Okay, so here are some specific numbers broken down by state. So 59 were taken out of service in Florida, 58 in Texas, 34 in Ohio, 30 in Pennsylvania, 26 in Michigan, 15 in North Carolina, 12 in Virginia, 12 in Wisconsin, 11 in Georgia. And he has made it clear that he will not reinstall the mail sorting machines that have already been taken out of service. And as Ari Berman perfectly points out there, this is a major crisis, especially considering that we have this general election coming up. DeJoy mentioned that, you know, these decisions were made because there's been a slowdown in mail. Okay, that's fair, especially after the pandemic, there has been a slowdown in mail. But also because of the pandemic, it's abundantly clear that many Americans are gonna rely on mail in voting in order to cast their ballots. And the post office knows that. How do I know the post office knows that? Because they warned all 50 states that the post office will not have the capability to process all the mail in ballots that are gonna come in because they have taken these machines out of service. So that argument is null and void, it's garbage, it's trash, it's a lie. Um, and by the way, just to show you how much of a difference this year is compared to previous years when mail sorting machines were taken out of service. In 2018, for instance, the agency, the post office, decommissioned about 3% of its delivery barcode sorters or 125 machines. In 2019, it was 5% or 186 machines. The 671 on this year's list amounted amounted to about 13%. Oh, gee, I wonder why there was this sharp increase in the number of machines they took out of service in a year when we're about to have a general election. Wow, is that just a crazy coincidence? Or are we hearing from a crook who's lying to the American people about helping Donald Trump rig an election? Okay, so two things here. So first of all, they said, no, look, uh, we're looking to save money here because of the lower volume. And we happen to coincidentally be speeding it up massively during the election year. 
but it's okay. It's going to save one point six billion dollars. Okay, oh, well, wow, that does sound like a lot. Now, there's costs associated with it too, so it's that's got to be a big number to justify the costs. So, did they save one point six billion? Nope. Theoretically, they saved ninety one million dollars, which I'm not sure even covers the costs. So, as usual, a massive lie under Donald Trump. We're going to save one point six billion. That's oh, ninety one million. Who cares? Who cares? Just move on. Move on. And so that's what is that? That's less than 10% of what they promised. About 6% of the cost savings that they promised. Okay, so uh, now the second thing is, he says, oh, I didn't know what was going on. I mean, you'd have to ask the person in charge of the post office. Dude, you're the guy in charge of the post office. You, that's your job. Uh, I don't know, what are we doing? Uh, oh, we're dismantling the, the mailers or sorters? I don't know that. Oh, we're taking away the boxes. I don't know that. What do you know? What do you know? Do you know that it was 3%, 5%, 13%? No, I don't know. What are you doing? What are you doing? Okay, but now as J.R. Jackson, our senior producer said earlier this morning in our production meeting, I'm trying to give him credit for a great point there. He said, okay, wait, you don't know, but now you say it's absolutely essential that you do it. It's essential that you do the thing that you don't know about. <laughs> like If you ask me, Hey, about a physics problem that I don't know. I wouldn't say, I don't know what that's about, but it's essential. How do you know? I don't know it. I don't know it. I don't know the formula at all. I don't even know if it's right. right? If you showed me a random formula and claimed that it was physics. So no, it, it makes no sense at all. This guy's an obvious liar. The mail sorting machines are so important for the upcoming election. And, and the Washington Post did a great job in breaking down the numbers to show what a, a, an average worker can do with sorting mail versus what these machines can do. And to be clear, both are very important. DeJoy also um, has cut overtime hours for postal workers, uh, which is also a bad move when you know you're gonna have this influx of mail-in ballots. But according to a grievance that was filed by the American Postal Workers Union, the Postal Service was poised to decommission 671 of the massive machines, about 10% of its inventory, and capable of sorting 21.4 million pieces of paper mail per hour. The Postal Service, by comparison, processes as much as 500 million items each day. So it's it's an important part of the Postal Service, especially during this general election, to have those machines in place. And again, Louis DeJoy is lying to us. But there was one moment where he was honest, and it had to do with whether or not he would be willing to reinstall these machines. Let's take a look. Well, we've heard about the sorters, you addressed that earlier. Will you be bringing back any mail sorting machines that have been removed since you've become Postmaster General? Will any of those come back? There's no intention to do that, they're not needed, sir. So you will not bring back any processors? They're not needed, sir. That is also a lie. So let me go to the graphics, let me go to the numbers. States with more people, states with more people, meaning more people are gonna want to vote, right? Hence, a larger USPS footprint had more machines taken out. California had the greatest number, 76, followed by Florida, 59, Texas, 58, New York, 52, and Ohio, 34. Alaska is the only state with no machines on the list. And also, according to data provided by the union, 618 of the 671 machines were to be disconnected by August 1st. I give you those numbers because DeJoy is like, no, no, don't come at me, okay? Don't come at me. I said I would stop. I'm gonna stop. No more, no more trouble, no more trouble. I'm not gonna touch the machines anymore. Yeah, except the plan was to get rid of 671. And by the time you agreed to stop these operational changes, 618 of the machines had already put had already been put out of service. So the damage was already done and he's being clear in that he will not reinstall the machines in time for the election. Yeah, but Anna, he really needed to do that. Uh, what is it that he did? He doesn't know, but he does know it was really needed. Uh, and yeah, if you dismantle 618 out of 671, that's already mission accomplished. So this is as usual, the Democrats whistling past the graveyard. Um, so here's a question I would ask the joy. You have 30 to $75 million invested in competitors and contractors to the post office. 
What is it? Is it 30? Is it 75? What are the competitors? What are the contractors? And how much money are you going to make by destroying the post office? Why are we pussyfooting around this? No, no, you will make tens of millions of dollars through these actions. So that you, if you don't lay out exactly how you're planning to profit off of destroying the post office, you're not going to have that job anymore. You're not going to have it tomorrow. But the Democrats would never do that because unless they're fighting progressives, they're cowards. One other uh, video that I do want to show the audience is DeJoy, um, you know, making these bold statements about how, well, these actions needed to take place. I didn't know anything about them, but these actions were essential. Okay, well, where's the data indicating that these actions were essential? He was asked that question during the hearing. Let's see how he responded. Senator, the analysis we did would show that we would improve service to every constituent. So that's great. So can you provide me by this Sunday, if I understand you correctly, you have an analysis that will show that this should have improved it. Although we are finding out through thousands and thousands of contacts to our office, to our connections, that it has not been the case. So this is frankly unacceptable. And I would like to see the analysis that this was based on to our offices by this Sunday. Can you commit to that, sir? No, ma'am. Can you commit to providing it to us at all, sir? Um, I can, I will get back to you on that. You won't commit to the American people to be transparent? Senator, I will go back and get the the truck schedule, the analysis that designed the truck schedule. I want you to look in the camera. There are millions of people watching who are impacted every day by what you do. And please understand that. And so I want you to commit to the American people to transparency and provide us with the data that has been used to create these decisions. Uh, ma'am, I don't I do not accept the premise and I will provide you with the transportation schedule that I directed the uh, uh, organization to adhere to. So um, based on the former post office inspector general's testimony, his name's David Williams, um, I can see how uh, Louis DeJoy, an incompetent person who has no expertise whatsoever in regard to the post office, would need help and some coaching in the middle of his uh, confirmation hearing uh, because he's not the smartest guy and uh, clearly doesn't have data, doesn't know what he's doing, um, but only has one interest in mind and that's his own self interest um, and helping Donald Trump essentially rig this election. Yeah, you know, if you're wondering at home, well, you know, he doesn't sound too bright. Uh, I can see it with my own eyes whether I agree or disagree with you guys politically. Uh, how do you get all that money? Guys, you gotta remember the number one trait to especially when you're doing government capture and crony capitalism is shamelessness. You don't need to be that smart. You just grease a couple of politicians and they give you positions where you can make tens of millions of dollars. It's really a sick system. But I'll tell you, Anna, the one silver lining here is they're overreaching and this is a this is a mistake. Not just, not on the election per se, uh, the Trump cult will be like, oh, great, we're stealing an election, that's a great idea. I think he could steal an election on Fifth Avenue, I'll support him. We don't need to stink in democracy anyway. So I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about even those guys, they like the post office. And they don't want to pay $9, $10 to send a letter, they don't. So you know, there's a story in the LA Times about how now the post office can't keep up. They did so many cuts, the mail is piling up for the first time ever. They're not able to deliver it on time. And then sometimes there's live things in the mails, like chicks, and then Baby and their chicks, yeah, and food, and it's rotting, etc. And those aren't just going to Democrats; they're going to Republicans too. In fact, I even see it in my Twitter feed. Normally, you know how much the right wing hates me, right? But even some of them are like, I mean, I I do kind of want my mail though, right? And now they can see it's slowing down. It's slowing down, and they want the post office so. There, I mean, you remember Joe Rogan clowning Dave Rubin on this, right? This is a thing that even right wingers get. Like, I don't want to pay ten bucks for every letter, and I want my mail on time. This is, oh, that guy's making tons of money off it, and that's why Democrats drive me crazy. Talk about all the money he's making off of it. They never mention it because they like the corruption. But if they pounce on that, the right wing would also be in a rage because even those guys, they also hate crony capitalism because they're not making any money off of it. They just got tricked into supporting the guys who do crony capitalism. So if the, if the Democrats were just 2% populist and 
5% fighters, they'd win every election super easy. Want to win a free electric scooter? Well, our partners at Aspiration and Zoom Electric are making it possible. All you have to do is head to tyt.com slash green summer for your chance to win.